Hey guys, this is Nick and this is an unplanned, impromptu video to talk a little bit about the Steam Deck. Now by now you probably all have seen, read, watched a bunch of videos about that thing. This is Valve's new handheld gaming PC that runs Linux, which is fantastic. So we're gonna take a look at what I think about it and why I think it might be a huge opportunity for the Linux desktop as a whole and not just for Linux gaming. Now speaking of huge opportunities, today's sponsor is one you don't want to miss. This video is sponsored by Safing. They are an open source company that develops the Portmaster, an all-in-one network monitoring solution. It allows you to watch everything that comes in or out of your network and then block or allow the stuff you want to take action on globally or on a per app basis. Portmaster is free as in free beer and completely open source and it also has advanced features like filter lists to automatically block ads, trackers or malware and it can enforce secure DNS over TLS for your whole computer. All these features are easy to access thanks to a simple and legible user interface and you can download it as a deb or an arch package. It's also available on Windows if you need it there as well. Safing Sportmaster is still in alpha and looking for users and input. The team is super responsive and you can contact them by mail, on Reddit or directly on GitHub. Follow the link in the description to download Portmaster and give the team your thoughts. Okay, so let's move quickly on the specs and the device itself because you can all read that on the internet. Basically, the Steam Deck is a handheld PC that's running on an AMD APU. It's a 4-core, 8-thread CPU running from 2.4 to 3.5 GHz and it's got a RDNA-based graphics part. This is the same graphics architecture that is on the Radeon 6000 series but in a much weaker form. The one that is included in the Steam Deck only has 8 compute units compared to 70 in the Radeon 6800 XT and is only 1.6 teraflops compared to the 20 teraflops of the same graphics card. So basically, I would expect this thing to perform just as well as a Ryzen 3 5300U, which is not terrible. Now, the Nintendo Switch probably wishes it had these kind of specs. The device has 16GB of RAM, which is huge and good, and 64GB of eMMC storage, which is neither fast nor enough. I'd expect most people to go to the second tier, which has 256GB of NVMe SSD, which is going to be way more for gaming and a lot faster as well than eMMC storage. Now the rich gentlemen and ladies among you might even spring for the 679 euros model, which has a 512 gigabytes even faster SSD and an anti-glare screen. Now speaking of that screen, it's a small 7 inch touch screen and it's running at 1280 by 800, which means that most games will run at 720p. It's got a 60Hz refresh rate, which is basically enough for that thing, and the resolution might seem low, but on the 7 inch it's still got a lot of pixels per inch. Now the Steam Deck also has a complete control layout with four thumb buttons, a thumb pad, dual sticks and back triggers and even more back triggers at the back of the device uh, that you can map out to anything. Now it also has symmetrical thumbsticks because why use a correct layout when you can decide to use an inferior one? Now don't kill me PlayStation fanboys, I'm only kidding. Half kidding. So it charges through USB-C and it can also output up to 8K at 60Hz or 4K at 120Hz through that same USB-C port. But its specs doesn't allow it to game at that kind of resolution, so it's only going to be useful if you want to use this as a regular desktop, which you can, we'll talk about that in a minute. You can also expand the storage through the microSD card slot, and the 41 hour battery is rated for up to 8 hours of gameplay, although I'd expect that with these specs and this capacity, will hardly pass the 4 hour marks for more intensive games. So it's not a bad deal for 419 euros, or even at 549 euros for the second tier. You basically get a complete laptop with input attached to it and a touchscreen. It's, it's really not bad. So now let's talk a bit about the software. This thing runs SteamOS version 3.0. It runs Arch, by the way. It also runs KDE Plasma in the background. The main interface that this thing runs will work with touch input or with the built-in controls, but you can also install anything that you'd like on it, because it's a real Linux desktop behind it. So you have access to the AUR, and you'll be able to access the Heroic Games Launcher, the GOG games, emulators, any Office suite. You can even use Touch to draw using Krita if you want. So this means that the Steam Deck can basically be your main computer if you want it. It can replace an laptop just by USB-C dock. When you want to use it as a regular PC, just plug it in and work on an external monitor. And when you want to game on the go, unplug it and go play with it. 
I'm pretty sure that some people will even try and install Windows on it or dual boot on it. I think it's possible. This would be outrageous and monstrous, but I'm pretty sure people will do it nonetheless. But there doesn't seem to be a real reason to want to run Windows on this though. Look, this thing's main purpose is gaming. And while Proton is a game changer for Linux, pun intended, it still cannot hold a candle to the vast complete library of Windows. You still have issues with performance and you still have issues with anti-cheat, especially stuff that is based on easy anti-cheat from Epic or from BattleEye. Well, it seems that Valve knows about this because they say they are working with the developers of these two fine pieces of pieces of software to try and implement them and make them work on SteamOS. Now this opens the gate for a lot of games that we couldn't run on Linux up until now. Fortnite, Valorant, Apex Legends, Vermintide 2, anything that used Easy and Agit, even Halo multiplayer. This thing is huge and it's gonna open the gates for a lot of gamers and for a lot of games. And since Proton and the Linux kernel are both open source, there is no reason why these improvements would not trickle down to any other Linux distros either. Now, there are some drawbacks to the device itself and to its Proton-first strategy. First, the device is heavy. At 700 grams, it's twice as heavy as a Nintendo Switch. Now, depending on the ergonomics, this might be an issue or this might not be an issue. But, yeah, if you're gonna feel that weight, it's gonna wait a lot. Second is the battery, and 40 watt hours isn't enormous. You might be able to handle smaller games for 4 to 8 hours, but as soon as you start to play The Witcher 3, for example, your battery will drain like crazy, and you'll probably won't be able to handle more than 2 or 2.5 two hours. Now, I don't know if people play extended sessions of more than 2 to 3 hours with their handhelds. I know I wouldn't, but I might be in the minority here. And third is the Proton First approach. Valve even has a developer's focused page that tells developers that they don't even have to port anything or work on anything for their game to work on the Steam Deck. This is a sound strategy for Valve. Instead of trying to make people port their games to an unproven platform, an unproven device based on Linux, they're just saying, you know what, Proton will handle everything, just release your game on Steam and we'll take care of the rest. It's a sound strategy and it's probably going to work well. But it also means that it's de-incentivizing developers to try and port their games natively to Linux. So we might see a huge fall in terms of how many games are ported to Linux natively and how many developers just say, you know what, there's Proton, it will handle it, deal with it, Valve. Now, I might be super optimistic here, but I still think that the Steam Deck has the potential to really open up Linux as a general computing platform, not just for gaming. The games will be the foot in the door. As soon as people realize that Linux systems can play virtually 100% of all Windows games, including those that use anti-cheat software, then they're gonna try and start using it and maybe stick to it, as long as they don't need Adobe software or Microsoft Office. But it might still make the market share grow a little bit and attract more developers and start a virtuous cycle of more users, more developers, more applications so we get more users, more users so we get more applications, etc, etc, etc. It might be the start of a virtuous cycle. But there's also the fact that SteamOS as a Linux distribution will probably be completely open, which means that there's a way that other manufacturers that are building those handheld PCs, which are starting to get more popular, maybe they will use SteamOS as well, because why pay a license for Windows when you have a guaranteed OS that will run virtually 100% of all Windows games? Might as well stick to SteamOS, right? Now this is all conjecture and we'll have to let some time pass to see if I'm right or wrong. Whatever is the case, the device will release in December and pre-orders have already started. I don't know at the time I'm writing this video if I'm going to pre-order one or not. I love the concept, the gamer and Linux user in me really want to dig into this thing, but at the same time I have virtually no use for a handheld gaming device. So we'll have to see about this. And that's it for this video. Thanks to Slimbook for making it possible. If you don't know about Slimbook, they are based in Spain and they make Linux pre-installed computers. From the most affordable laptop to the highest end gaming PC, you can buy anything from them with any keyboard layout at any price point. They ship worldwide and I basically only use their stuff now. I have their desktop, one of their laptops and their keyboard. If you want a Linux based device, check out the link in the description below. They have really, really good stuff. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't hesitate to like and subscribe and if you didn't you can also dislike and tell me why in the comments if you don't like watching on youtube you can also grab all my videos from odyssey and since i'm gonna go full-time on youtube starting the end of october if you want to help support me don't hesitate to subscribe to my patreon account or on youtube you'll get access to a weekly patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics i'll cover so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye